Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of me failing miserably at ranking something that's very dear to your heart and offending no one whatsoever. Um, and on top of that, we are advertising some lovely advertisements in the background. Very professional, very high quality video coming at you right now. Now, as we go through these whole factions that we're ranking for Third Age Total War Divided Conquer, please note I haven't played every single one to its victory condition, but I've played most of them. Um, on top of that, um, I've watched... And all the ones that I haven't played, I've watched people play uh, on Let's Play. So I do know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about these factions. I'm going to just be ranking them based on what I like to play. So don't feel offended if your favourite faction, if it's Goblins of Moria, is on the bottom. Because Goblins of Moria is on the bottom. Um, if you love playing that, good, well, like, fair play, fair play. Um, but yeah, this is just my personal opinion, guys. So please don't look too, in, too far into it. Um, I know you're all big Lord of the Rings fans, and if I say anything lore-related that's completely wrong, please let me know in the comments, but it's very unlikely, very unlikely, no, I'm joking, very likely, it's very likely, uh, but yeah, of course, Goblins of Moria is on the bottom because they are trash, everything about them is trash, I believe when you play as them, you don't start with Goblin Town, so trash, units, trash, enemies, hard, just trash, just, just I, I can't say trash enough, guys, I, it, absolute dog shit faction dog shit and i believe that um they are reworking it so hopefully in the next patch uh, in version 5 we'll get to play as goblins and mori on the channel maybe and see how they do uh, but yeah let's go through all the goblin sort of evil factions um isengard great faction strong early game very strong early game easy ish Rohan enemy. I have an Isengard Let's Play on the channel, guys, so if you want to check that out. And it wasn't as straightforward as I was expecting, to be honest. Um, but yeah, Isengard, very good faction. Good fun. Late game, though, I've got to bring it down to B, because late game, unit choices are quite limited, and you don't feel like there's that many purely elite forces. You get trolls, you get Nazkai, uh, but if you're playing Isengard, play with the Isengard Unleashed submod, because uh, it adds a few more elite troops, um, like some elite wild riders. Uh, I believe they're called the um, Guard of the White Hand or uh, White Hand Riders, something like that. And they are strong as hell. Best wild unit in the game if you include that mod. Um, now, more evil Mordor. Oh, come on. <laughs> Mordor. It's A tier. Mordor is amazing. I love Mordor. I don't, well, everyone hates Mordor. Why does everyone hate Mordor so much? I hate playing against Mordor. I actually genuinely really enjoy playing Mordor. I don't know whether it's just because I have a predilection to like playing the baddies in video games, the evil people, but Mordor, I don't know. I enjoy that. They're, they're reasonably fun and, you know, they have trash. Their units are generally trash, but they do have good options that aren't trash. That are available. Um, the what big problem is you're fighting Gondor, who pretty decent, pretty well armored early game, uh, and they do smash out a load of troops. So it's it's a hard slog, but you know I, I enjoy it. It's fun. You get the Temple Wards, you get the South Run units that that really add a bit of flavor. Um, and I'm sure everyone's commenting in the comments now how much of an idiot I am, or has left the video, most likely left the video, the whole two viewers out there, thank you for watching, um, I hope you haven't left by now. Uh, but next evil faction, Orcs of Gundabad, they, yeah, they are strong, um, they have strong units, really strong units, the Mountain Guard are oh, incredibly strong, uh, Pale Oryx, strong, best trolls in the game. I was going to put them in C tier because they're not, I don't know, I don't really find their campaign that fun or that engaging. Um, you basically have two enemies and that's it. Uh, so I'm going to put them C tier. I, I, they're strong, but I don't feel like they're that fun to play. There's obviously no scripts that go along with them. Um, so no, I, I can't put them any higher just because... You know, why, why do we play these games? For fun, guys. So, they're not that, that fun, really, are they? Um, evil, evil factions. Where else are we going? Right, Harad. I think that's all the... Go oh, Dolgador and Angmar. Ah, Dolgador. Hmm. Ah, 
C tier, I'd say, with Gundabad. I, but not that fun to play, I would say. A ranged based faction. Okay, late game, you know, you get the Camel Shadow Guard and all them, but. I've never really had much fun playing Dolgador, I've got to admit, compared to some of the other factions. I always have fun playing Divine and Conquer, but uh, Dolgador just is not really that fun of a faction. You get the Nazgul, Nazgul, always fun to play with Nazgul, um, but uh, Dolgador, weakish units, reasonably strong enemies in the Woodland Realm and Lothlorien, um, so you're going to have a slog, a slog with these guys. Luckily, the AI is dumb as hell, so they'll probably send out Legolas uh, to die by himself somewhere in the middle of nowhere. So you can probably have fun with that. But apart from that, um, you know, who doesn't have fun killing Orlando Bloom? Um, but yeah, no, not a great faction. Angmar. Angmar has a great faction. Is it S tier? I, I don't think so, but it's so close. Angmar is a great faction. I'm so glad they reworked it to being a human-based faction rather than a goblin faction. It really, really sets them apart from a lot of the rest of the evil factions, especially in that area. Uh, I mean, if you go down south to and far away, you get the evil factions that are human. But in that area, there aren't really any other evil factions that are human. So I really, really like them. I like playing as them quite an easy campaign you have a lot of rebel territory you can gobble up very quickly um, the um, the Dunedain are good a good enemy to fight against if you want to go take Ered Lewin that is rich as hell go and do it come south to the, the high elves there's just a lot of flavor a lot of fun in that campaign I would say um, so yeah A tier definitely right Harad of course Moomakil but I don't know. I, I think Harad is a hard start. Um, you know, you have a big rebel garrisons all around you that you need to fight. Your economy is pretty trash. And units you have early game are trash. I'm tempted to go D tier. I'm sorry, Harad stands. I'm sorry, Harad stands. You do have a very strong general's bodyguard unit, though. All cavalry bodyguard units are amazing in this game. I'm sure you're aware. Um, so that does kind of bring it up a little bit, but yeah, I, I still am not a big fan. Um, just never really had that much fun. Of course, when you get Moomakill, redonkulously strong. They are a little bit too big, though, I, I, would, I would say. And I, I think Galu said that in one of his campaigns. They are too big to really do that much damage. They start wandering all over the map, and you're like, charge here, and they're just walking around aimlessly. So the unit is just a bit too big, but they are fun. But until you get Moomakill, pretty meh, pretty boring. Of course, this is just my opinion. And, and like these rankings, like the only real trash is Goblins and Moria, I would say, that isn't that fun to play. Um, and of course, the neutral-ish factions will go for the uh, Dunland and Clans of Enidwyth. Now, they have had a bit of a rework, but Dunland's definitely better than the Clans of Enidwyth, but... I don't really have that much fun playing these guys, I've got to say. And I think they're one of the least favourite sort of uh, factions, along with the Goblins of Moria in the whole game. People do really like Harad, so I am sticking my neck out right there to put them down there. But these guys, I don't think it's controversial to stick them down towards the bottom. The Ar Ardunaim. Fantastic. Fun, fun faction. Strong units. Big melee base, really good melee base. Crossbowmen, which are shit, but apart from crossbowmen, good. Aye. And unique in the fact that you can start anywhere on the map. It takes a bit of time to get to wherever you're going, if you want to go up to Tharbad, say, or Mythlond. But these guys are fun, man. These guys are fun. You have so many different options. Like, you can go anywhere. And of course, it's, yeah, just fun to play, guys. Love playing them, love watching people play them, uh, and different ones. Galu went to Osgiliath, took Osgiliath. Um, where did Izzy go? I can't quite remember where Izzy went. Um, he didn't go up to Thar, but did he? I think he went to Ministerith as well, did he? No, he went to Dol Amroth, Dol Amroth, and took Dol Amroth. So you got so much scope, guys. It's just so fun to play as them, and a pretty strong roster uh, in general. On top of that, you get them. 
Uh, you can rebuild the Numenorean cities, so Tharbad, Osgiliath, um, you get Minas Tirith units. You get units from other regions that aren't your units as well if you get the Constriction Camp. So um, really good, really diverse, big roster if you look at all the regions you can get different troops and really fun start. So they are definitely A tier, if not A plus, I would say. So we'll bring you guys across here. I know I'm just gonna hurt so many people with this Mordor. I like Mordor, I'm sorry. Variags of Karned. Solid B tier, I'd say, solid B tier. Shite units at the start though. Infantry, abysmal, but you aren't an infantry faction. But, the other side of the coin is the blue wizard choice does add so much flavor to Khand that even with their kind of spread out and loose soft start, you can have such fun with them when that blue wizard, um, that blue wizard uh, script fires and you've got your choice. So that's one of the uh, nations that you get a scripted event, I think. Is that the only one here? Apart from Isengard when uh, Saruman gets the ring, um, I don't believe any of these other ones. Uh, Mordor, of course, getting the ring, bringing Sauron back. That's a scripted event. But nothing on the scale of Khand. And it is good fun to play that. And good, good flavour for the game. It's hard, mind you. It's very hard. But it's fun. Of course. Very fun. Uh, right. Now we are kind of onto the good factions. I think we will go with the dwarves first. And the dwarves of Ered Luin... Sorry, Eric Lewin stands. Boring. Boring, I would say, as factions go. You have the choice, but the choice basically just means you, you know, you get the Grimborn if you go evil and you go more neutral. Uh, if you go good, you get access to other units, better units, um, and you fight Angmar. But that neutrality does in itself kind of add a little bit of flavor to the game. I'm looking up Dolgador. Ah, it's got to be better than Dolgador, hasn't it? Dolgador is down there. D plus Dolgador. Um, just for the Nazgul. Uh, but yeah, Erod Lewin, I, I think like their, their unit roster is limited though. That That is one of the big things. You don't really get that many units. And they're not all that fun to use. Um, you know, crossbows being your primary archer is always trash because crossbows are so slow and they have they must be like literally directly in line with the enemy to kill them. So I've never really enjoyed crossbows. I've never really had that much fun with Erid Lewin. Erebor! Erebor stands. Yes. Erebor is great. Um, not as good as Ar Ardenheim. Ah, better or worse than Angmar? I'm not sure. I, I'd say equal to Angmar. But yeah, Erebor. Reasonably, reasonably difficult campaign to start with. Not monetarily, but going... You've either got to focus straight on Gundabad, focus south. Uh, but yeah, Erebor. Really strong roster. Really strong. Um, I'd say strongest Dwarven roster. Obviously, that makes sense because they are, as it says in the description, they are the experienced Dwarves. The Dwarves that have been fighting for the longest. Um, fighting in the Iron Hills for many years against Orcs. Um, and obviously they reclaimed Erebor. So they kind of are the Dwarves of the Iron Hills really rather than Dwarves of Erebor. But yes, good faction, strong faction. You get Erebor. Do you get any scripts for Erebor? I don't believe so. Uh, but yeah, good fun. Always good fun. And it's always good to play Dwarves. I love Dwarves. Uh, contrary to Ered Lewin being down here. But I love Dwarves. Dwarves are cool. Dwarves are cool, man. So Erebor's up there. Now Kazadoom. I think solid B tier. Not quite I put it ahead of Isengard just because of the script. You know, the start script. Everyone's seen the start script. It's fun. It adds a bit of flavor to the game. Um, you can try and find Gandalf to get rid of the Balrog. Balrog comes if you don't. That's a bit of flavor, a bit of fun. Uh, but yeah, Kazadoom. Decent. Good, well, obviously a good unit roster. They're dwarves. Dwarves all have good unit rosters. Well, I said that every Luin roster was shit. I, I didn't say it was shit. They are good soldiers. They're just not as uh, diverse unit roster, I would say. Uh, or as good. 
Kansas Doom Dwarfs have a good unit roster. Um, and that little script at the start where you're going through the mount, uh, woods or you're going around through the Anduin Vale always adds flavour. Always is very fun. So, I say Dwarves of Kansas Doom. Good, good choice. Um, if you want to like get in there and get interested in the game, I'd say Dwarves of Kansas Doom is one of the best ones to kind of start with. Because once you're in Kansas Doom as well, you don't really have the too many troubles. All you have is Kansas Doom uh, West to contend with. And once that's gone, pretty easy really, and not too many enemies. So it's a reasonably easy campaign. Good money, uh, good units. So a very easy campaign. I don't think any Divide and Conquer campaigns are easy per se in terms of if you look at vanilla Total War where it's it's incredibly easy. Like <laughs> like Rome Total War and Medieval 2, you can take over the whole map so easily. Divide and Conquer is not the same as that. Um, but Dwarves of Kazadun, one of the easier starts and one of the more fun ones, I would say. So up in B tier, solid B+. Right. Let's get on to the elves. Um, so I believe this is the high elves. Just let me check. Yep, yeah, high elves. Uh, some of these aren't actually the ones that are used in the game, so that's why I'm inspecting them. And you are your Dale. Yep, yeah, of course. Yeah, that was silly of me. Of course, that's Dale. Um, but yeah, high elves, easily S tier, strongest unit, strongest units in the game by far. Well, say by far, but. Yeah, by far, very strong units. Basically, nearly impossible to stop. Um, you have Inglorian coming back, and Elra here, who has cavalry, who have cavalry bodyguard. One of do they both have cavalry bodyguards now. God, I've played this. The, there's so many different versions of Divide and Conquer. I can't quite remember, but I believe they both have cavalry bodyguards now. The um, horse archers from the Dunedain. So uh, they are so strong, and and. The High Elves are so strong. Uh, in the in the West, you don't really have any enemies, so you can take some rebel rebel settlements with ease. Um, in the East, obviously the big thing to contend with with the High Elves is the corruption that besets your empire, uh, because Mithlon's the capital and Imladris is all the way East, so if you start taking a lot of regions around Imladris, I can't speak, Imladris, be sure to make Imladris your capital because you'll make a lot more money as long as you know you've got a decent chunk of wealthy settlements there. Um, get rid of all that corruption. Uh, but yeah, high elves, so strong, so strong. Like your units are redonkulously strong, and you should have no problems fighting the goblins of Moria. Absolutely not. A little bit of issues with Angmar, but still, you should roll over everyone in that area. Really, um, you are the high elves. Uh, right, the Elves of the Woodland Realm. Uh, where do we go with these guys? I mean, the Elves, so they've got to be A tier because the Elves are oh, good. Um, and they are strong, strong units. Good archers, of course, they're Elves. Um, great late tier, tier, uh, late tier gameplay, game units. But generally, who you're fighting is pretty easy. You're fighting Dolgador and your elves, so you should have no problem destroying Dolgador. The one good thing about them, though, is that, same with Lothlorien, is you are reasonably close to the Black Gate, so if you get the ring, you don't have far to go, really, um, to go and destroy Mordor once and for all. But relatively easy campaign, as we talked about before. Um, but again, it's elves, so they, they are strong units. And Lothlorien, I put Lothlorien first. I can't quite remember whether Woodland Elves get Yavanni's Union, but uh, Lothlorien definitely does, uh, allowing... Well, I think, no, yes, they, bef uh, they both do, so you get units from the other Elves, so they're both reasonably as good as each other. I think Lothlorien might be a slightly easier starting position, because you don't really have any enemies apart from Dolgador, and you just go across the river and fight them, uh, which is not, is not too hard when you're the Elves. Um, the Woodland Elves have a lot longer to go till they get to the, you know, Dolgador or Amunlank. Uh, so, yes, Lothlorien, definitely stronger in terms of its starting position. Reasonably easy, it's just very hard to recruit troops, take up ages to recruit, and your money situation at the start, not brilliant, but just go genuinely. You wouldn't want to do this if you're doing a Let's Play, but genuinely, if you get um, Haldir and... Celeborn and march 
just those two units to Dolgador at the start of the game, you will probably capture Dolgador. Their generals are that strong. They are ridiculously strong. Like, crazy. Like, not quite as strong as the High Elves, where they get ridiculously strong generals anyway, but then they get even, like, horse archer generals. Um, but yeah, Lothlorien. Wow. Wow. Those generals can pack a punch, man. Pack a punch. Um, yeah, so now we come on to the human. Oh, the Easterlings of Rune. We didn't do you when you were evil. I love the Rune. Rune is fun, man. Uh, Rune. Rune is fun. Rune is a fun campaign. Uh, you have access to the Sea of Rune. Get strong, strong um, monetary situation from that, basically. Take Sea of Rune. Reasonably strong garrison in Lest and a few of the, the uh, rebel settlements around you at the start. Uh, but your units, you should have relatively good time against Darwinian because Darwinian tends, when it's the AI, to throw out some of its trashier units rather than waiting to recruit better ones. So, Rune, yeah, good. Good, good, good. Now you can see a trend here, like a lot more up in this area than down below. So I clearly do like a lot of factions. <laughs> but, you know, the, the mod is just created so well. I, I think it's the best mod ever created for a Total War game. It's just created so well that it's hard to, to, to hate on some of these. It feels painful putting Harad and Dolgador down here, but got to have some indeed, don't we? Otherwise, what's the point? Um, Right, so we did the evil one. Anduin Vale. Skin changes, that's all I'm saying. Skin changes, more fun than Erid Luin. Ironically, these two are big enemies at the start of the game. So if you go and take Goblin Town, sort your economy out, that should sort it out. Uh, but you do, you are kind of, you've got your enemy in the south, which is Dolgador, you've got Gundaban in the north. It's a pretty easy campaign. Um, I've actually not played it fully, but I've watched a couple of people play it, and it looks it's pretty easy from what they say uh, and from what uh, it looks like. But the skin changes are OP, man. They are OP. <laughs> they are strong. I think they have 25 attack, don't they, or something, which is crazy. And two hit points, but they are supposed to be humans that turn into bears. The one issue with them is, um, I believe... I don't know whether they've patched this or not. Um, the general always stands pretty close to the front, if not on the front line, rather than having captains in front of him. Um, you can't really see that. So the general unit, the bottom units here, the general will stand right on the front line, rather than most time they have two captains in front. Um, and that basically stops the general getting killed early. But your skin changes seem to die very easily from, um, you know, fighting. But... You know, uh, cities are limited, your building roster's not that good. Uh, the rest of your units are okay, uh, but they're not amazing. So, I'll say Anduin Vale, solid C tier. Oh, reasonably fun campaign though, I, I, w I wouldn't say it's it's, it's, uh, it's not fun. Um, probably a bit more interesting than Arid Lewin, but yeah, it's not the greatest. And there's not really any scripts to go with it, so uh, of course. Right, some big hitters coming up. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna leave Brie till last. Uh, Dale, oh Dale, I love Dale. <laughs> I keep putting a load of these guys in A. Oh come on, no, I can't put it in S. That's too high. That's too high, man. Dale, great campaign, great fun, good archers, really good archers, good bit of variety. Get to go south. I don't know. I'm, I'm just a Dale stan. I don't know why. It's it's fun. Good late game units. Ranger units. Always amazing. Um, and you get a good strong enemy um, in the end. Because Rune should beat Darwinian. you got to go and help Darwinian. Uh, so you should go. Problem with uh, Dale is their economy at the start of the game is absolutely trash. Like <laughs> it's diabolical. Like you, you will just be losing money hand over fist if you go. So if you're looking for a Dale campaign, build your economy up first. Stick troops in forts unless you're going to send out small armies to take rebel settlements. Um, 
and build that economy up because you need to. Promise me. I promise. Promise me. I promise you. You need to. Um, yeah, Dolamroth, widely considered hard. Um, yes, Swan Knights gotta be B tier. Not really. I don't know. I've just never really had it. Uh, really liked Dol Amroth that much as a faction to play as. Um, but as I say, one of the hardest starts from what everyone says. Um, so it's going B tier because. I rank harder sort of starts generally higher. If you watched my uh, Rome Total War campaign, I put the Seleucids in S tier because they have the hardest start. Um, but yeah, I'm better at Rome Total War than Divide and Conquer, so maybe I'm not weighting the difficulty as much. But yeah, of course, if Swan Knights have a good, decent roster. Well, good, very good roster. Um, but yeah, I don't know. They're just not as good as these boys. Gondor! Gondor! For Gondor! Yes. Uh, yeah, Gondor. Great faction. Good fun. Best looking unit roster, I would say, in terms of how accurate it is to the films. Uh, I don't know. And the books, most likely. Um, but yeah, Gondor. Good. The pro. Ah, no, I'm going to drop it down. Because primarily you will be fighting stack after stack of Morgul rats and Mordor scum. So, no, it can't be. It can't be because you have to fight Mordor to start with. Mordor is, I, I love playing as Mordor, but playing against Mordor is just infuriating. So annoying. You're just literally like, oh, I have this army of pretty decent mid-level troops. And Mordor just comes along and goes, how about 3,500 goblin band for you to deal with? And you're like, well, I mean, I, I, I will deal with them very easily, but I don't want to be in a battle for 10 minutes to kill 3,500 Morgul rats. So, yeah, okay. I dropped him down from S. Um, but yeah. Rohan, pretty meh. Not a big fan of Rohan. Um... You also, to note with Gondor, you get the uh, Denethor going crazy script, which adds a bit of flavour. I like that. Uh, I, I really do like that. Um, yeah, my, uh, Rohan. Rohan, I'm sorry, Rohan. I know you're a fan favourite from the films and all that. You are better than Erid Lewin. I'm just thinking, who would I rather play? Would I rather play Rohan or Anduin? I'd genuinely probably rather play Anduin. So, Rohan, stuck. Stuck there. Um... Obviously, good cavalry. That's that's it. You should wipe the floor with a lot of people, so don't worry too much about fighting Isengard, although Isengard units are strong early game. Vale of Dorwinian. This is a very hard one. I like Vale of Dorwinian as well. I, I can't. You guys are going to be so angry with me for this. I don't know. I just enjoy Dorwinian. I enjoy. I'm sorry. The Elven Choice. Always good fun, a bit of scripting. You, why would you ever go for the economy choice though? Because like, that's just much less fun. So go for the elven choice, so you can recruit elven units. So a human, a human nation that can recruit elven units, fucking excellent, love it. Um, and you fight Rune, who are really fun, fun uh, nation to play against and fight because they, they generally have decent, decent units in their armies. Unlike a lot of the AI that loves to fill its armies with trash, genuine trash. Um, so yeah, Darwinian, I'd say decent, good fun. Although you thorn units, bit samey, bit boring, but when you get to that elven choice, always adds a bit of flavour. Ah, people are gonna be so angry with that. I'm sorry. Northern Dunedain, of course. S tier, fantastic nation, really fun, loads of enemies to fight, really good, really, really good troops, and the reunited kingdom script. What more could you want? In fact, fuck you, High Elves. Dunedain for the win. Let's go. Bang! Absolutely love the Dunedain. Really fun. You get Gandalf, and you get him twice. <laughs> so, what more could you want? You get Aragorn's Grey Company. Fucking amazing unit. Literally. Tears through everyone early game. Tears through them. Tears through them, I promise you. Unreal. Gandalf with a uh, uh, cavalry general. Nearly impossible to stop. Really good rangers. 
good decent uh, I mean the wardens are a bit trash but apart from the wardens really decent troops really decent troops and you get access to Bree land troops as well and what more could you want than Bree land militia because of course Bree is going in the top spot what a fantastic nation I don't know why people don't like Bree it's probably yeah it does have the weakest units in the game probably but you get the opportunity later on to go with the Dunedain, get Dunedain units, and get Elven units. Or go for the mercenary choice, where you can get any mercenaries, which is quite interesting because you can have Bree and be getting far rune mercenaries in Bree, which is just kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, I. I don't know, Bree is just fun, man. It's a fun. You get the hobbits throwing stones who are actually more powerful than you think guys because they are armor piercing stones remember um but yeah Bree, not too hard enemies really if anyone stays neutral you don't have that hard enemies to fight just dunland and dunland should roll over quite quickly so i guess in terms of that it's you know it's not like the do uh, do that sorry I, uh, I can't decide but yeah Bree, and you get pipeweed who doesn't love a bit of Hobbit pipeweed. Um, certainly Merry and Pippin. Uh, that addled their brains a bit, didn't it? But yeah, fantastic faction. Good fun. Good scripting. Um, obviously up there in S for memes. But I love it. I love it. So, what do you think of my ranking, guys? I'm sure you all hate it. And I'm sure you're all commenting right now. But please do. Please do comment. Please do like. Please do subscribe. I currently have my Isengard campaign on the channel, and I will be doing a Bree campaign after that. So keep tuned, uh, keep tuned in for that. So do subscribe for that, um, and I'm sure you're going to love it. Thank you very much, guys, for watching, and I'll see you again on the next video.